Like many things in medicine, we can't say exactly how ECT works. We can't say exactly how most medicines work, both in psychiatry and general medicine. We have theories, and we certainly have theories around how ECT works. Uh, we know it does not work psychologically, meaning it does not frighten the person into getting better. And years ago, there were many studies done looking at what's called sham ECT, which is setting up everything like ECT, except giving the actual treatment and real ECT. And by and large, real ECT worked, sham ECT didn't. There are three predominant theories today about why it works. Very simply, one has to do with increasing available catecholamines, which are certain chemicals in the brain norepinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine, things of that nature. And there's uh, uh, many animal models supporting that and a few human models. There's a theory that has been around for at least 20 or 30 years dealing with what's called neuroendocrine aspects of ECT, uh, which is somehow the treatment stimulates areas deep in the hypothalamus, which is in the lower part of the brain, which sets up a whole chain of chemical events. And most recently, there's a theory uh, dealing with a neurochemical called GABA, which looks at an anti-seizure mechanism of why ECT works. And although that might seem illogical at first, you know, how are you inducing a seizure and saying ECT is anti-seizure? Um, we know that when people have a seizure from whatever mechanism, naturally or induced, it's harder, more difficult to have a seizure afterwards. We are also increasingly using drugs that are anti-seizure drugs for people with bipolar disorder, depression, mania, uh, drugs such as Depakote, Neurontin, Lamictal, and it was thought that ECT may work by a similar mechanism. I think the bottom line is we know there were many chemical changes that take place with ECT, and the bottom line effect of it is we try to get the brain chemistry and brain functioning back to normal.